Hello, we are going to talk about the primitive functions of the powers. Our main goals are, first of all, learning to calculate the primitive functions of a natural exponent. Then, learning to see the primitive functions of a negative power. Then, we will see the primitive functions of the radical powers. And finally, the general expressions for the powers. The necessary knowledge would be knowing how to derive basically the fundamental rules of derivation, and it is also essential to be familiar with the concept of primitive powers. Despite that, we are going to take a quick look at it. Primitive power concept. We say that the primitive of a function f dx small is an uppercase f, if only the derivative of the uppercase f is the small f. Said that way, it can be confusing at times, but it is very easy to understand when seen graphically. If we take the uppercase f, which would be a primitive, and we derive it, we will find out what we should obtain is the small f. That is simply the idea of a primitive. The set of all the primitives is what is represented by the integral symbol. Well, we are going to derive the immediate antiderivatives for the powers. In this case, if we want to find the primitives, or the integral of x raised to the power of n, the primitive is going to look the following way. It is also going to be an x. The exponent is going to be greater than the one we had. If we had 2, 3. If we had 3, 4. And it is going to be divided by the new exponent. Then x powered to a greater degree and divided by the new exponent. This expression works for all natural numbers. We should not forget that we must always put the constant of integration, which is the one that gives us all the variability of the primitive functions of the powers. Ultimately, this would be the expression. If given, one has to believe it, but one can always derive it and check if such a result is correct. How do we check if this expression is indeed correct? Well, as we said before, we would take the formula and we would derive it. If we derive x power to n plus 1 and divide it by n plus 1, the exponent would go down, the n plus 1 would get cancelled, and we would end up having x power to a lesser exponent, which in this case would be n. Then, indeed, the derivative of that expression happens to be x power to n. Let's not forget that c does not bother us because its derivative is zero anyway. Well, an example of this expression is the simplest integral that we can find, the integral of x. In this case, the integral of x squared, which essentially is x cubed divided by 3 plus the constant. In other words, one more degree and below the same degree that we have been putting. And what happens when the exponent, instead of being above, is below? Put in a different way, when instead of having x power to n, we have 1 divided by x power to n, a very similar formula will do the trick. And this is due to the following. 1 divided by x power to n can be easily represented as x power to minus n. In this case, we are simply using exponent notation. And for this exponent, it will serve us exactly the same rule. We take the exponent, we add 1, we divide exactly by the newly obtained exponent, and we add the constant c. We observe again that if we derive the exponent would go forward, it would go with the one below, and the one we had added would disappear. Then indeed, the final result would be x powered to minus n, and this is its primitive. All these expressions that we have inside of the green rectangle will come to be the immediate antiderivatives. A practical example could be 1 divided by x cubed. 1 divided by x cubed is actually x powered to minus 3. And now is when we apply the expression we start by adding 1 to the exponent, which is not minus 4, when we add 1 to minus 3 is minus 2, and we put below exactly the same exponent, which is minus 2. We end up left with this number right here, this expression here, plus c, and now we get to simplify it by sorting things out a little. The x power to minus 2 is actually the 1 divided by x squared, the minus we can move forward, and we will end up having this way simpler expression here. Well, what happens if the exponent is not negative? but is rational instead. Let's say we have an nth root of x power to n. Well, so this is again a power, therefore we know that this power can be described as x power to n divided by m. And now we are able to apply the same expression again. The expression would be again x power to the same exponent plus 1. And below the new exponent obtained, this one being greater indeed. To prove that this is true, it is again the same as we have done previously, we derive and see that it actually happens the same. We would lower the exponent, and the exponent would go with the one below, and the one that we have actually added would disappear. 
then the derivative comes out as x power to n divided by m, which is what we were exactly looking for. An example of a direct application of this rule would be the cube root of x. That would be x powered to a third. And we proceed to apply the rule x raised to a third plus one divided by a third plus one. And now we simplify a little the value of a third plus one, which as we know are four thirds, both above and below. And now, by sorting out this a little, the four thirds of the denominator become three quarters, and the x raised to four thirds is the cube root of x raised to the fourth. We have changed again the notation from power to radical and from radical to power, and this would be the final result. Well, so the antiderivatives of the powers, we can then state an immediate antiderivative like this one we have on the screen right now. This would be that x raised to alpha will basically be x raised to alpha plus 1 divided by alpha plus 1 plus the constant. And this will be useful for any alphas, a real number, as long as this one is not minus 1. But why does the minus 1 fail? Well, if we try to apply the formula when alpha is minus 1, in other words, for the function 1 divided by x, we would see a rather strange behavior in that case. Such behavior would basically be the primitive coming out to be 1 divided 1 by 0, which is something that we do not know what it is worth. It does not make much sense. Actually, 1 divided by x is a particular case, and it is relatively easy to prove that the primitive of 1 divided by x is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x. Again, if we derive the natural logarithm, we will have the 1 divided by x. Well, so having said that, these two antiderivatives must be remembered. We must understand them well. And all the way up to here, after today's lesson, we are able to calculate the antiderivatives of functions in the form of x raised to the power of n as well as calculate the antiderivative of the fraction 1 divided by x raised to the power of n, of radicals in general, of any power as long as alpha is different from minus 1, and when it is minus 1 as well. That is all for today. Thank you.